Summary and Psychological Journey of Elon Musk, according to first and second chapter of his new biography. Today's story began to unfold with Elon Musk's grandpa Joshua, who was a true adventurer with some firm beliefs. He grew up on a farm of central Canada, and his life was nothing short of incredible. Now, here's the juicy part: Joshua met his future wife. Winifred, in the most charming way, she was the owner of a dance school at the time, and Joshua decided to do, and Joshua decided to take dance lessons there. But when he asked her out for dinner, she turned him down, saying that she doesn't date her clients. So what did he do? He quit the dance class and asked her out again. Talk about persistence, right? A few months later, he straight up asked her to marry him, and her response: "Tomorrow," she said. They went on to have four children, including two girls, May and Kay, in 1948. And for some of those who familiar with Elon, then you know that May is his mom. Um, but here is where the story really takes flight. One day on a trip, Joshua spotted a for sale sign on a single-engine airplane in a farmer's field. There was just one problem: he had no cash. But <laughs> this is actually what he did. He convinced the farmer to take his car in exchange for the plane. And get this: you just bought a plane, and you wouldn't know how to fly it, right? And he literally hired somebody to flew him home, and also taught him how to fly the plane, which is. Pretty incredible. In 1950, Joshua made a bold decision and moved his family to South Africa. They even adopted a family motto: "Live dangerously, carefully." And unfortunately, Joshua's adventurous spirit met a tragic end when he was teaching someone to fly, and their plane hit a power line, resulting a fatal crash. And Elon later reflected on his grandpa's love for risk and how it. Energized him. So far, we knew that how and when Elon's grandparents moved from Canada to South Africa, which is quite important. But also, the story tells that risk and adventure seeking has always been there within Elon, with been there within Elon's family. And here we go, another important character. Arrow, Elon's father, was quite the multi-faceted character. He had an engineering degree and worked on ground and worked on grand projects like hotels, shopping centers, and factories. But that was just the tip of the iceberg. Elon had a thing for restoration, whether it was old cars or planes. But above all, he shared a deep passion with the Hotman family, which is Elon's mother's family, which is flying. In fact, he owned a slick twin-engine Cessna, sing slick twin-engine Cessna Golden Eagle, which was his pride and joy. Now, here's where the story takes a fascinating twist. Although Enrico was working as an engineer, but he was constantly looking for the next big thing, the next opportunity. While Arrow was looking to sell his beloved plane in 1986, he landed at an airstrip in Zambia. Z a m b i a. It was there that he met an entrepreneur who made him an intriguing offer. Instead of cash, the, the entrepreneur offered Arrow some emeralds produced at three small mines he owned in Zambia. Sounds like a great deal, right? But here's the catch: Zambia had a post-colonial government, but it didn't exactly have a functioning bureaucracy. So these mines weren't exactly registered, and Arrow mentioned he never had an ownership stake in them. Still, he expanded his trade by importing raw emeralds and having them cut in Johannesburg, where he lived in South Africa at the time. It was all quite. Interesting business, or a little bit shady, you could say. Many folks came to him with stolen emeralds, and during his overseas trips, because he had a plane, so he was constantly traveling, right? He'd sell them to jewelers, a bit cloak and dagger, because none of it was exactly legal. 
at his peak, his business brought him profit of almost quarter million dollars. And keep in mind, this was in the 1980s, right? Pretty crazy. And biography mentioned that his dad also used to have gold. I'm not sure the color is gold, but his dad also used to drive Rolls Royce. But as luck would have it, in the 1980s, the Russians created artificial emeralds in the lab, and his business came crashing down, and he ended up losing every bit of his emeralds earnings. So it's all about supply and demand, right? Before that, emerald was quite rare, which means that it cost a lot. But then they created in the lab, so there's suddenly so much supply, and obviously what you have, even the emeralds you owned before now, they're pretty much worthless, right? So here's the intro of Elon's father, a tale of high-flying adventures, shady deals, and ultimately a fortune lost in the twinkling of an eye. I guess if you want to gossip, you could say that Elon Musk came from a good family because they were well off enough to own airplanes with both his grandpa and his dad piloting their own plane. But that would be taking things out of context. What is truly remarkable is a connection between their material comfort and their innate family traits of risk taking. By now, we all know that Elon's grandfather, his mother, and father all share a common threat. Adventure seekers. They possess an adventure spirit that set them apart from the average person. And this familial inclination towards embracing risks and boldly venturing into the unknown has undeniably played a pivotal role in shaping Elon's audacious approach to life and business. And now, their marriage. Errol and May's love story began in their teenage years, but it was far from a fairy tale. Drama accompanied their relationship from the very beginning. This is after they've been dating for a while. When May discovered Errol has been cheating, it left her heartbroken and unable to eat for a week. Ironically, her grief-induced weight loss helped her win a local beauty contest, earning her cash and a spot as a finalist in Miss South Africa contest. After May graduated from college, Errol proposed again. Promise, promising faithfulness in marriage, May, who had recently ended a relationship with another unfaithful boyfriend, had her own insecurities as well, and she agreed. Their honeymoon in France took a sour turn when Errol purchased banned copies of Playboy and spent his time staring at them. Leading to bitter fights, back in South Africa, May contemplated ending the marriage but discovered she was pregnant, making it seemingly impossible to undo the union. The name. At first, they considered naming him Nice after the town in France where he was conceived, but thankfully, they settled on Elon. Named after May's grandfather, J. Elon Hedelman. Elon's early school days were a mix of intellectual curiosity and social challenges. His mother believed he should start nursery school at the age of three due to his intellectual curiosity, despite the principal's reservations about his Despite the principal's reservations about his age, the decision led to loneliness and social struggles as he was younger than his classmates. And if you're thinking about from three to four years old, it's actually not a huge difference. I mean, yes, if you're thinking from the perspective of being an adult, but when you are that young, actually, the age makes a huge difference because you're still developing your brain, you are barely developing your social skills, right? And, um, you know, you'll find out more about how much influence that has on Elon's life. His tendency to daydream and become lost in thought, much like Leonardo da Vinci, marked his early years. He often zoned out in classes, focusing on his inner world rather than the external one. Despite his intellectual capabilities, he struggled socially and felt a deep sense of loneliness. 
Elon's childhood pain of loneliness would remain with him, and he expressed a strong desire never to be alone, a sentiment that stayed with him till now. And this chapter is called "A Mind of His Own," and to me, this is literally the perfect story. So Elon was just five years old, right? And one day he had been punished to stay home because he got into a fight at school. And while his cousin was celebrating a birthday party on the other side of on the other side of Pretoria, which is where they live in South Africa at the time, a nearly two-hour walk away, and despite not being able to read the road signs because we were only five years old, and with only a vague idea of the route from car rides, he set off on his own because he didn't want to be alone when his cousin was at a birthday party. He walked tirelessly until he reached the party. Just as it was ending, his mother was obviously super shocked. In a mix of fear and determination, Elon he didn't want to be punished again, so he climbed on a maple tree and refused to come down. And imagine you're Elon's younger brother. You were like three, four years old, and just seeing your older brother. On top of a maple tree and refuse to come down, like because of you know, like when someone made up his mind or her mind, they just some people are just so determined or even stubborn at times, right? And this fierce determination in Elon amazed his younger brother Kimball, who stood beneath the tree, gazed at his older brother in awe. And this is something very important, right? His determination is a trait that will continue to define him throughout his life, and I think determination is something that really a trait that amongst all great personas in history. So, psychology. Now, I want to dive into a fascinating aspect. Of Elon Musk's life, that the biography touches upon his Asperger's diagnosis. But before we get into that, it's crucial to know that Asperger's is no longer considered a separate diagnosis from autism in medical community. It's all part of the broader category called autism spectrum disorder (ASD). Then let's explore. How Elon's childhood experiences and traumas might have shaped his personality, especially from a union perspective. So, number one, childhood trauma and complex shadows. If you've seen the last video, then you knew Elon's early life was marked by significant challenges, and these experiences could have contributed to the development of a complex psychological concept called the shadow. And again, in union psychology, the shadow represents those hidden, darker aspect of our own personality. It's essentially something that could be put as you don't know what you don't know, especially about yourselves, right? These are traits, emotions, and desires that were often repressed because they won't, because they don't fit our self-image or societal norms. Two PTSD and emotional hijacking. Elon's childhood traumas could have led to a condition known as post-traumatic stress disorder (PTSD). In individuals with PTSD, their limbic system, responsible for emotions and memory processing, becomes hypersensitive or hijacked. This means that even small triggers can evoke intense emotional reactions, as if They are relieving the traumatic event, and I'm sure a lot of American audience will know that、uh, PTSD is a term they often talk a lot about veterans, right? So, for example, if a soldier have been at war, right, and even something such as like the jumpstart of an engine, then maybe it could be sound a little bit like explosion, like that. 
tiny little cues could trigger a very intense emotion reactions, even after he's, for example, this person is back home um, in peace. And uh, there's a TV show very long time ago called Homeland, and I think they uh, portrayed PTSD in there super well. Just for those who are curious. Number three, repression and projection. When we experience trauma, we often repress certain emotions and memories tied to that event. However, these repressed feelings don't simply disappear. Instead, they linger in our subconscious minds. And this can create a disconnect between our conscious and unconscious emotions. The skeletons in the closet, so to speak, stay locked up. Like these trauma and the emotions and memories we have even we don't think about it imagine like hiding in a closet right right or shove it under the bed it does not mean that they're not there anymore right like you your brain is so powerful and it will literally pretty much remember that for the rest of your life and then like it would govern how you act if you don't address them the next points empathy and emotional regulation now, how does all this relate to empathy and emotional regulation? Well, trauma can significantly impact a person's ability to control their emotions and empathize with others. Emotional hijacking can make it incredibly challenge, challenging to someone. Emotional hijacking can make it incredibly challenging to manage intense reactions. This, in turn, can affect our or any part or anybody's person or anybody's capacity to understand and connect with emotions of others because we are overwhelmed by our own emotional turmoil inside and although here we are talking about these concepts in the context of elon musk but i really encourage a lot of us when we're listening to reflect a bit on ourselves right because as i mentioned um that we all have a somewhat eventful childhood, right? And maybe this opportunity to take a thing or reflect about those memories and emotions, right? Therapy and self-awareness. But here's the good news. Therapy and self-awareness can be incredibly valuable tools in addressing and healing from the impact of childhood trauma. It's about shining a light on those hidden aspects of our lives. Understanding how they affect us and working to reintegrate them in healthier ways. So in Elon's case, his Asperger's diagnosis might be just one piece of a much more complex psychological puzzle. It's safe to say that each one of us has experienced the ups and downs of an eventful childhood, like I mentioned. And this serves as a crucial reminder that behind every person's behaviors, including our own, there's often a profound story of experiences and trauma that has played a significant role in shaping who we are today. And this is something about me and when I'm reading the biography, I'm constantly reflecting, right? Like we think that we understand ourselves or we think we understand somebody and we think it's so simple. It's like one plus one equals two. He or she did this because of one thing for one motive right but it's super complex and um i don't know maybe it's interesting for you to know that and moving forward the divorce just when you thought you were getting to know elon's life a bit better Here's another twist. His parents. The divorce of his parents. May and Errol Musk found themselves in the midst of an Oktoberfest, surrounded by friends and tourists. However, what started as a lovely evening took a dark turn when a man from another table whistled at May and called her sexy. This incident didn't incite Arrow's anger toward the man who is responsible, but rather unleashed it upon May himself. 
According to May's recollection, Arrow's reaction escalated dangerously, and it took the intervention of a friend to prevent physical harm. Fearing for her safety and overwhelmed, May sought refuge at her mom's house. She later reflected. Over time, he had gotten crazier. She recounted incidents where he would being so violent to her, even in the presence of their kids. And Elon, who was just five years old at the time, tried to intervene, hitting Arrow in an attempt to protect his mom. Arrow, however, denied these accusations, dismissing them as absolute rubbish. And in the aftermath of Oktoberfest, Errol acknowledged his mistake, visited May at her mother's house, and offered his apologies. And May's mother, Winifred, Win- Winifred Hadelman, issued a stern warning, making it clear that any further mistreatment will result in May moving in with her. While physical abuse ceased after that incident, Errol's verbal abuse continued. Hurtful words like "boring," "stupid," and "ugly" became a painful refrain in their marriage, which, despite attempts at reconciliation, never managed to fully recover. Arrow admitted his own failings to the author of the book, acknowledging the allure of youth and beauty that had strained their relationship. Ultimately, they divorced when Elon was just eight years old, and May juggled jobs as a model and dietitian to make ends meet. Arrow perhaps, Arrow perhaps didn't believe in her predict that she would return to him out of poverty and able to provide for their three kids. And during this difficult period, Elon sought solace. In the night, immersing himself in books as a form of escape, and just like a quick teaser, like from eight years old, because I'm further in the book now, from eight years old till he was like eighteen or twenty something, like he just continuously reading, 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 and he will read everything from like just general knowledge about the universe, or like really, like he just always. People said that he essentially always had had a book in his hand, and just when you thought things couldn't get any more challenging, Arrow launched a custody battle, issuing subpoenas for Elon's teachers, May's modeling agent, and their neighbors. But just before going to trial, Arrow abruptly dropped the case, only to initiate similar court actions every few years. Causing immense emotional turmoil for May, Elon, and his siblings. May and Errol were individuals drawn to dramatic intensity rather than domestic tranquility, a pattern that would leave a lasting impact on their family. Conclusion: As a wise man once told me, "There is no light without darkness." It's often those who have endured the darkest nights that shine the brightest. Elon's childhood was marked by traumatic experiences, particularly the challenging relationship with his father, which left him with a complex shadow. Yet, even in those early years, it was clear that he was a different kind of individual. But how would he continue to grow? What happened to him after his parents' divorce? To discover the answers, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Together, in our next video, we'll dive deeper into Elon Musk's remarkable journey. Biography written by Walter Isaacson, video produced, shot, and edited by Jazzy. Thank you for tuning in. I will see you on Sunday.